But I want to just, I, I think my time is very short. I, I, I preach very long. And so I got a lot of things to unpack uh, to you. And I want to just do a disclosure right away. I'm a stutter. I, I stutter. And I come from a family of stutters. So if you see me, you know, getting tripped, it's not because I don't know how to speak. It's just because I stutter. Hey, I have a, a cousin of mine that owns a business, a uh, septic system business. And so there's tractors, backhoes, and all of that stuff. And one day they were working on a job, and, and so he saw that his uncle was driving the backhoe, and he was digging in an area. So he runs off his truck to the tractor, and he's climbing up the tractor. And all of a sudden, my other uncle, when he you know, took the arm of the backhoe and dug it into the dirt and pulled up a water line, and just all this water just came out. It was like crazy. And my cousin, the owner of the company, was at the tractor, at the dirt, going, ah! tell you that there was a line there <laughs> too late <laughs> the line was broken nothing you could do about it so today if I started ah, ah, I was gonna preach to you but I just couldn't do it <laughs> uh, I was recently in Cuba with our, our, our brother Jason friend invited me uh, to go and uh, minister with him and we had a great great experience I uh, we had Two services a day, over 2,500 people each service, miracle after miracle. We preach, by the way, we preach two sermons, two sermons in every service. I would come up and preach, and then he would preach behind me, and we would share the pulpit like that, and it was just amazing. People just waited there, and miracle after miracle, there was a, a pastor that came up the first night. He says, could you pray for me? He says, the, the Spirit of God has left me. I'm not in sin. I'm not in sin. The spirit of God has left me. I don't feel the fire of God anymore. I, I, I'm dead. I, I don't know what to do. And he, my wife had a, a surgery to the spine and she fell down and now everything's complicated. She can't sit down. She, she's sick. And then uh, all of a sudden I said, what do you mean the spirit of God has left you? What do you mean that the fire of God is no longer in you? I, I, it's in the name of Jesus, I put hands on her and I put hands on, on him. And the wife that was in front of him fell on top of him. And the next night that they came up to the service, she came up to testify that she couldn't even go to the bathroom to defecate. Uh, uh, no, no. Is that the word? Yeah, that's the word, right? Me and Jason were joking about that because he's got that, that gift to heal people from that problem. And so... So, uh, so he was she was testifying that the Lord healed her spine. And then in the corner, I saw her husband, and the Lord gave me a word to go speak to him and said, who is the one that is speaking to you here those words of discouragement? Because it's not my voice. You go tell him that right now. And I, I took the national leader of missions, and I walked back there to the back of the auditorium, and I said, the Lord tells me to tell you that it's not his voice that is speaking to you, telling that the spirit is left. It is not his voice that is telling you that the fire is gone. Who is that that is speaking to you here? In the name of Jesus, I block that ear and I open your ears to the voice of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit only. When I said that, he fell to the ground, took two people down with him. And listen, when he got up, he says, hey, I, I want to tell you something. I said, in the name of Jesus, put hands on him and he fell down to the ground. No, I want to tell you something, he says. Remember my cousin? I, I, I. <laughs> And he says, I want to tell you something. I've never been able to hear from this ear. The Lord restored me the first night. The Lord restored I, I feel awesome. But tonight, today, when you pray for me, my ear opened up. We have miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. <laughs> Pastor also wants me to share about a minister that we uh, 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 have in our, in our church uh, years, a couple years, three years, four years. I don't even know how long it's been. As I get older, years get confused. Uh, 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 and we started a ministry. One of my women in, in the church is married to a federal judge. And her job to the county has been to help women that are in trouble, batter women, uh, women that get trapped in the court system to human trafficking and all of that stuff. And so one day we were talking and she says, you know, what, what, the, uh, she was sharing with me everything that she was doing. And I said, you know, you have a ministry. And I begin to tell her what a ministry and how a ministry operates and how God gives us those ministries to make a difference in the life of people. 
And so we decided we would open in an office away from the church and we call it the office. And just so you know, everything that we do, it's illegal. Nothing that we do, it's illegal. It's legal, I'm sorry. Uh, Donald Trump is not in the house. Donald Tr I told you I stuttered. Donald Trump's not in the house, right? Okay, okay. Did you, did you notice how clear he was when he said, when he said, uh, uh, you know, he's from Mexico and I'm from Yuma? You know, I think you voted for Donald Trump, by the way, just so you know. I, that's all right. I love the man. I pray for him every night. So, 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 so we started this ministry and with her husband's help, we began to contact with women. women they were in trouble with human trafficking women. They were bad, uh, uh, better women. And, and so we thought that we would help 50, oh, 15 to 50 women a, a month and, and, uh, or a year maybe. And so it just went on and on. And the first months we realized that this was getting too big. And we decided to extend our lease of one year to five years. Because last year alone, we rescued 2,000 women out of human trafficking. Uh, the NFL just started, but the NFL has got one of the biggest events in the world. It is Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl Sunday is a trouble Sunday for the FBI because there are a lot of groups from the world that bring their, 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 their prisoners to hotel rooms so people can be entertained in the rooms. And although there is a football game taking place, there's suffering that is taking place in hotel rooms. And the FBI doesn't know what to do anymore with so much human trafficking during, around the, the, the Super Bowl games. So we sent our team uh, this past year to Super Bowl Sunday, and we brought back 20 women uh, from uh, human trafficking. Out of those 20 women, seven were uh, minors. Uh, we put them in a, in a, in a, in a home and to you know, just let things chill out a little bit. You guys understand chill out? Uh, 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 to chill out a little bit, and then... Uh, in that, the group of seven, seven minors, there was a 14-year-old girl. And when we contacted her parents, we called her parents and said, hey, we've got, we've got your daughter. She's safe. We have her in a safe house. Uh, uh, you know, she's good. And we've been helping her out. And we've been doing this for her and that for her. And the parents says, okay, you can keep her. We don't want her. And we were not prepared to do that. And God has just been moving in an amazing way. I get monthly reports of what God is doing. And, and it just seems, I, I sometimes tell my wife, it seems like it's a lie. It seems like it's not true. That there's so many women uh, 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 hurting and being trapped in this lifestyle. And it's just, just unbelievable. But you know what I'm here to tell you? That God has sent us to be world shakers and history makers. I'm here to tell you that God has sent us to make a difference. I'm here to tell you that God has is, God is planted his spirit in our lives to, 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 to shake the gates of hell. To tell the devil that he has to release the lives for the glory of God. And, and so it, it's, it's just God has been amazing. And so today I want to share with you a message. Uh, I don't know how long I have, but you just put me a red light and I stop, I'll stop. It doesn't matter where I'll stop. I want, I've been preaching to my church, uh, month of September is the month of the Holy Spirit. So I want to share something that God, you know, uh, gave me during this, this time of preparation. And I have so much information that I want to share with you that I, if I violate the rules of preaching, please forgive me. Please forgive me because most likely I'm going to do it. I, I can preach, but today I'm going to mess it up. Is, is it okay with you? Is it okay with you? I'm going to mess it up. And I want to talk to you about a spirit, a spirit filled life. We are people of the spirit. I said, we are people of the spirit. We are different. We are not just like anybody else. We are different. We are carriers of the presence of God. We are people that they live in victory. We don't fight to see if we're going to get victory. We fight because we know the victory is ours. We don't, we don't go to prayer to see if God is going to answer our prayer. We go to prayer because we know God is answering our prayers. 
You know, I'll tell you what. I don't serve a Jesus that is crucified. And I don't serve a Jesus that is in a tomb. No, no, no. I serve a Jesus that is sits in the throne, ruling, interceding in my behalf. I serve a Jesus that is sits in the throne in authority. And listen to me. Uh, my Jesus is victorious. My Jesus defeated Satan. My Jesus defeated my sin. My Jesus set me free. My Jesus anointed me with power. And every time that the Holy Spirit manifests the gifts of the Spirit in our lives is the manifestation of the victory of the cross of Jesus Christ. Wow. All right, all right, let me preach. <laughs> there is a passage in the book of John chapter uh, 20. Verse 19 and on. And by the way, just so you get a kick out of it, I'm reading my notes in Spanish. I told my wife, should I translate it? She goes, don't mess it up, baby. <laughs> I want to talk to you about how God introduces the spirit into different groups in different times. I want to tell you how men, they were uh, depressed and defeated, had a visitation of Christ, and they were sent to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ with an anointing of the Holy Spirit. The, the frame or the picture that we see here is Christ has resurrected. Uh, the disciples are, are hiding, are in hiding. They are afraid of what is taking place. Uh, they're, they're afraid for their lives. They don't know what to do. And, and, and all of a sudden, this, this verse is recorded by John chapter 20, verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came to and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed, he showed them his hands and his sight. Then the disciples were glad, and they saw, and they, and they saw the Lord. They began to worship the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. There's few things that we see in this passage. One is the doors were shut. Second, there is a surprising entrance of Christ. Then also we have a demonstration of the resurrected body, the resurrected corporal body of Jesus Christ. And then we also see that they are being sin. The scenery or the, the, the side is... Jesus is, is resurrected from the death. And, and it's interesting because uh, this is a different resurrection. We know in, by history, biblical history, that there's people who has resurrected. Jesus himself resurrected the, the son of the widow. The, it was in the procession to be buried. And Jesus felt compassion for these women and, and went to the casket, opened the casket and resurrected the boy. We also know that Jesus resurrected Jairus' uh, daughter. And we know the story of Lazarus, right? Jesus loved Lazarus and he resurrected Jesus. But all of this, all of these resurrections needed an assistance. All of these resurrections needed an assistance. Who assisted Jesus? Jesus is in the tomb by himself. The resurrector is in the tomb. It's in the grave. We know of people that were resurrected in the Old Testament too. It just... just for those who are, who, are, who are wondering. But what is different about this resurrection? All the resurrections had an agent of faith. God used somebody to raise the other person. But Jesus now is dead. And there's no agent to help him. This is interesting because... This resurrection is so different because here's the, the dead body of Christ. Now, let me just leave that there and come back to this moment. In the beginning, when God created creation, he said, let's, let's make men 
And then they, he got some, some beautiful uh, soil clay and put it together. And it, so I think they had to be selected. I don't think he just went and got whatever. I think he, he was selected from, from some, you know, Oxner just, I, I know I'm, I'm telling you, I, I preached real long. Uh, um, uh, Oxner has got one of the best soils in the world. You can plant anything there and it grows like that. So he got some of that Oxner soil and brought it and, and created men, created men. But then there was these men of clay. They had no life. They had no life. It was, it was just there. There was no life. And all of a sudden, God breathed on that clay. Breathed on that clay. And it wasn't oxygen that he breathed on that man. It wasn't oxygen. It was himself. It was the spirit of life that was breathed into that dead. Now we find the dead body of Jesus Christ. Listen. Death, sin, put Jesus in the grave. But death cannot kill the spirit of God. The spirit is guarding the body of Christ. And on the third day, the spirit of God speaks to the body of Christ. And the body of Christ resurrected. Oh, please say amen. amen. Because this is interesting. Now we are victorious. Now we have, now death cannot hold them down. It's interesting because death can hold the human body down until Jesus Christ comes into our lives and lifts us up. The Bible says one day that one day the death of Christ will rise again. Isn't it true? But why can why is Jesus resurrected? Because death can't hold him. Death can have death doesn't have a grip on Jesus. He this is the sinless body of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Hebrews that he was tested in every way, but he was sinless. Death has no grip on Jesus. That's why death cannot hold him down. I don't know if you know what I'm talking to you this morning. Come on, wake up. Let's coffee for everybody this morning. And it's amazing because now, because of the resurrected body, listen to me. Death cannot hold me down. Dead cannot hold you down. If you are a believer, if you accept the Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have new life in Christ. And the new life that you have in Christ cannot hold you down. Death cannot hold you down. If you die today, listen, you die today, but tomorrow morning you are at the presence of God. Immediately you are at the presence of God. That's all that happens. All right. So the doors were shut. I love this. Word in English because it doesn't translate as good in Spanish. In Spanish, I tried to find the word the doors were shut, but but he only said the doors were closed. And and it's not that just the doors were closed. These people had barricaded themselves behind these doors. These people were afraid. These are the disciples of Jesus Christ. Oh, now they're 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 looking to find us so we can be put to death just like Jesus was. We thought that Jesus was our leader. We thought that Jesus was our defender. We thought that Jesus was we thought that Jesus was the answer. That's why I left my tax collective business to go to go follow Jesus because I thought I was going to be a ruler in his kingdom. That's why I left my business of fishermen because I thought I was going to be part of the kingdom of God of the government. That see, they were looking for a place in government they never thought they were going to be ministers they thought they were going to be administrators of the kingdom but jesus says no 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 i got a different plan jesus didn't come to establish the kingdom of the jews jesus came to establish the kingdom of jesus of, of god and that and that's totally different some of you are here this morning and came with a need or come with dreams or come with expectations that God may do this with your life and God may do that with your life but God's got something different in plans Oh, please say amen. amen. When God called me to, I've been preaching, by the way, since I was 12 years old. I know I'm not that good, but I've been preaching since I was 12 years old. I'm still practicing. And, 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 and when, when God called me to, to, to the ministry at 12 years old, he didn't call me to pastor. So I never, I never went that direction. But 20 years ago, he called me to be a pastor. And I said, I ain't going to do that. I said, yeah, you are. No, I'm not. Let's just get it clear, God. I ain't going to do that. Two and a half hours later. I said, I'll do it. Here we have these men that have barricaded themselves. Their expectations have gone to the ground. Everything that they thought that Jesus was, now Jesus is dead. They saw him hanging in the cross. 
They saw him beaten down. They saw him bleeding. How could it be possible? He was our hope. He was everything that we, we believed he would be. We saw the miracles that he, we, th we thought that he was the Messiah that was promised. <laughs> what happened? And now they're barricaded uh, uh, and, and feared and, and, and they don't know what to do. And we're next. They're looking, they're looking for us. If we, we can't go to Galilee because if we go to Galilee, they know us. They know who we are. They identify us. We were with Jesus all the time. It's interesting. Now they're captivated by fear. And I'm just here to tell you that if you let in fear govern your life, you will never be able to hear what God's got to say. All of a sudden, the women come back from the tomb and they said, hey, we have seen the master. We saw him. He is alive. But they didn't listen to that. Listen, they didn't, they didn't hear what the women were saying. It's not what they want to hear. They, 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 they're, so, they're more interested in, in making sure that the doors are shut. Not, not the doors of the building were shut. No, the doors of their soul was shut. Faith had left their lives. Faith was gone. See, if you're shut inside of your soul with fear, faith is gone. You can no longer believe that God can do it. You can no longer trust in God because faith is gone. Faith is outside of the room. The message comes to tell you, listen, he's alive. Victory is yours. We have, we're victorious. God, God is alive. Jesus is raised from the dead, like he said. No, they can't hear that because fear is taking hold. They shut the doors of their soul. Is there somebody here this morning? They have shut themselves up in fear and terror. Faith was outside, but they were inside in fear. I wonder why did Jesus take so long? Why didn't he just himself went and told them, hey, listen, I am here. Why did he send the women? Because Jesus wanted to give them an opportunity to exercise their faith. He believed in them. They were still in an expectation that something would happen, but they're so discouraged. When they, when they saw Jesus before Pilate, they, they were thinking, you know, just right now when he's before Pilate, man, he's going to do something and a revolution is going to take place, but it didn't happen. He goes down to get beaten. He goes down to the cross and the disciples are saying, this is not possible. It's not possible. We saw him minister. We saw him cast out demons. We saw, we saw him resuscitate Lazarus. We, we, saw, we saw him do great things. Their kingdom idea had been shattered. We find themselves lamenting in misery, embracing each other in misery. The women come and say, listen, he's alive. But you know, man, ah, that's just women. Don't listen to what women say. Pfft, that's just women. No, he's alive. Mary, Mary, Mary said he's alive. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I saw him put in the tomb. I saw the big stone. I saw the Roman soldiers guarding the tomb. We're next. We're next. No, he's alive. Don't listen to the women, please. <laughs> Because we are so good in shutting down the messenger. We want God to speak to our lives, but we want it to be a certain way. We want it to be a certain color of skin. We want it to speak in the language that we can hear. No, no, we are so good at shutting down the messenger. God said, no, 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 my message is the same. I could send my message, whoever, if it's FedEx or UPS, it doesn't matter. It'll get there. Can I, can I just tell you a story? Pastor, please keep my clock. In my church, I'm the pastor, so they just got to wait. <laughs> 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 
My son-in-law, my son-in-law does the recording in the back, and when they say, hey, Pops, he, you did an hour and 15 minutes. Really? Yeah, you did. <laughs> so, yeah, but I'm not going to do that because I know you got another service. To do, but, but what was I going to tell you? No. It's interesting. I was at a service one day, and I was going to preach. And there was some pastors making fun of me as I was getting ready to preach. They were, with all due respect to professionals, they were doctors, they were eloquent people, and they were looking down at me. And he made me feel so uncomfortable. I was shaking in my pants when I got to the pulpit. I was just so nervous. I had been belittled by their laughter, by their, by their jokes, by their comments. You got too much material, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And... And I just got to the pulpit and I just let the Spirit of God do whatever He does. Because it's not about me. See, I, I'm only doing what God told me to do. I, I'm only be, trying to be obedient to God. I, I struggle at doing the best I can, but, but that's, all I, that's all I can do, just try to do the best I can to the calling that He's placed in my life. And when we were done preaching, they came and apologized to me. And they so sorry, Pastor. We were going to leave when we heard, when we saw your name in the bulletin. We were going to leave. We were not going to hear you speak. But we want to apologize to you. Listen, sometimes we're so quick in, in closing our ear to the messenger. And as long as we do that, we will never get the message that God has for our lives. The women are saying, he's alive. Let me just move forward. There's the physical and dynamic entrance of Jesus Christ. The story tells us that Jesus came. This, this, this word that Jesus came, it means that he arrived in the midst of their fear. And the room that is shut down. And the room where their, where their, where their fear is taking hold of them. Jesus, Jesus makes his presence known. He's arrived. And I don't know about you, but I've been in situations that have been difficult in my life. And I've been waiting for God to arrive in my life. And there ain't nothing more glorious to know that he is there for me. And I can trust him because he'll never leave me. You know what I'm I, I was going to go Spanish. I, I don't know how many of you know that when Jesus arrives... Everything changes. Everything changes. But please remember, remember that, that every time he makes his presence known, things will be greater and greater. Things will increase. He had planned this moment. God doesn't do anything out of his sleeve. He had planned this moment. He had planned this moment to arrive in the midst of their fear. He had planned this moment to arrive in the midst of, of their most weakest moment in life. And their most defenseless moment. And he had planned it to do it this way. He could have gone to his disciples immediately, but no. Why? Because he wanted to give them an opportunity to execute their faith. There were leaders and there will be the, the future leaders of the church. Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against them. They would be the ones that would take the gospel to the end. Listen to me. Because of those disciples, you and I have the gospel of Jesus Christ today. This is, Jesus is pushing them to have an extraordinary faith. He's given them the, exp the opportunity to express this extraordinary faith. How many, how many of you have seen him? God is trying to give you an opportunity to propel yourself to a different dimension. To, to you know, one of the things that I've learned as I was studying about the, the breath of God is that when he breathed on men, he, he, he launched men forward. It wasn't just for me to have life and stay still. No, he he, he launched me forward. He propelled me. So Christian men and women, children and young people are, are moved forward by the Spirit. 
And God is appearing to his disciples in this way because he wants to propel them forward to an extraordinary faith. To believe, to lay hands on the sick, to deliver people, to, to speak the gospel of Jesus Christ and lives be transformed by the power of their message. I gotta hurry, I gotta hurry. I hope you're getting something. Jesus establishes his presence. The Bible says, and once he was placed in the midst of them, it doesn't even, simply says that he appeared to them. No, 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 no. This is more than just an appearance. This is establishing his presence in the midst of the life of the disciples. Yes, I was brought to judgment. Yes, I was beaten. Yes, I was taken to the cross. Yes, I was carried down to a tomb. And yes, I am here to stay. The gates of hell cannot hold me down. I said the gates of hell cannot hold me down. Jesus is in the house. Jesus is here to stay. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Jesus is making his presence known and he's establishing himself to make a difference in your life. It's a sickness. It's a financial need. Is it a problem with the government? What is your problem? It doesn't matter because Jesus is making himself known in your life. He's here to stay. Just a quick story. Uh, last Sunday, I finished doing all my services, and and then I I had some. They did some fried tacos at church. Man, that was good stuff. And uh, I left my wife there, and then I went on to a hospital in Beverly Hills to visit a person in the hospital. They had traveled to San Salvador and got some kind of virus, and and uh, out of. 100,000 men, uh, one man gets this sickness. And what he does, the, uh, just real fast, the, the, I know you're going to get mad at me for saying that so many times. Man, she, she's keeping clock, man. Pray for me. Will you please pray for me? Uh, and, and so, so there's this virus when you get sick from your stomach and your, your immune system begins to fight the virus. And then once, once the virus is gone, the immune system got confused and it began to fight his electro system and burn all the nerve system in his body. And so he went from not being able to move one hand to not be able to move his whole body. He can speak, he can move, he can talk, he can do everything with his head, but he can't move his body. He's been there for 50 days. And I told his sister, I said, I want to go visit him to the hospital. Nah, you can, you're too busy. I want to go visit him to the hospital. Nah, you're too busy, Pastor. You're too, don't, don't go, don't go. Stupid people. I'm so is that okay? I don't cuss, but I, I, that's actually a good word. <laughs> and, and so, so th this two weeks ago, she says, could you go visit my brother? I said, I've been asking you. And I went there and I saw this man sitting in a wheelchair that couldn't even go to the bathroom by himself. And he took two and a half hours to tell me everything that was going on in his life. And I said, you're tired. But I just want to share with you a couple of things. I said, Jesus is faithful. And he's true. And he's here today. I said, as I was here, when I said that, his face began to cry. There were tears coming down his face. And I said, no, listen to what I'm going to tell you. While you were talking, I saw you, 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 your sickness in the time of your rehabilitation just go like this. I saw it. I'm telling you, I saw it. I saw it. I saw it go like this. And you'd be out of this hospital before you know it. And he was crying. Listen to me. We can say things like that because we know he came to stay. He ain't leaving. He's here to stay. He's making his presence known in your life. So you know that you're not alone. He is the God that said, I will never leave you. He is the God that said, listen, I will never forsake you. He is the God that said, I will be with you forever and ever and ever. And listen, he is the God that said, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. 
Don't be afraid. I'm coming. It's not over. I'm coming back. They're confused because they're now they think that Jesus is a ghost. Oh, he's a ghost. And then he says, no, 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 no. Look, look at me. I'm not a ghost. Look at me. Look at me, Peter. Look at me, Peter. James, Matthew, look at me. I'm not a ghost. I am your master. I have come. Ghosts get not raised from the death. Ghosts cannot defeat sin. I went to the cross not to be defeated or to be tested. No, 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 no. I went to the cross to take your sin. I went to the cross to make you free. I went to the cross to take back what the enemy has stolen from me. Because when I was there, when I breathed in a man on my presence, I never intended men to be captured and sent. I never intended men to be defeated. No, 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 no. I went to the cross and I went to the death so I could bring you back. That's why I'm here. I'm not a ghost. The Jesus that is here. By the way, those notes, poor notes. <laughs> Jesus is saying, I'm here. Listen, so you know that it's time for you to take back what the enemy has taken from you. It's time for you to go back to your territory. If he's taken your son, it's time for you to go back and claim your son. If he's taken your marriage, it's time for you to go back and claim your marriage. If he's taken your finances, it's, it's time for you to claim your finances. If he's taken your job, if he's taken your promotion, if he's taken your business, if he's taken your knowledge, if he's taken your happiness, if he's taken your peace, if he's taken your joy, if he's taken your dreams, if he's taken your... Listen to me! It's time for you to go back and take it back! He's in the house. He has come victorious. My Jesus is no longer defeated. The fact that he is before, before his disciples is telling me that he has defeated everything, everything, everything that was holding me back. When I went to tell my pastor, I wasn't going to tell this story. When I went to tell my pastor, the guy to call me the pastor says, you can't even speak and you want to be a pastor. Many people told me that I will fail. Many people told me that I will never amount to nothing. I'm a good businessman. I own a business since 1983 and all of my employees own their own houses, just so you know. I'm a good pastor. I have people that love me. I have people to care for me. I have people to pray for me. I have people to dream with me. I have people to believe in me. I, listen to me. My, I pastor my brothers. I pastor my sisters. I pastor my parents. They love, although I, I used to fight with my brothers, oh, they sit in front of me and they do whatever I say. They love me. They dream with me. They cry with me. Listen to me. I went back and took whatever the devil wanted to take from me. I took it back and I believe that Jesus Christ can use this clay for mighty and awesome things for the glory of God. You can do it too. You can do it too. I'm not here showing. Well, I am showing up for Christ. Let the glory be to God. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Can you imagine preaching without notes and then reading in Spanish? <laughs> Jesus envía a sus discípulos. How do you like that? <laughs> Jesus and his disciples. Just as the Father sent me, so I send you. Did you just hear that? Just as the Father sent me, says Jesus, so I send you. That's amazing. That preaches, that alone, pastor, that alone preaches right there. Just as the Father sent me, so I send you. Listen to me. When God sent the Son to come and defeat Satan, to come and defeat sin, God was not playing with the life of His Son. 
God is a good businessman. God never invested in anything to lose. God never invested in your life to lose. God invested in your life to win. When God sent his son, he didn't, he didn't send him to see if he was going to make it. He didn't send him to see if he was going to be obedient. He didn't send him to see if he was going to go through with it. No, 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 no. He knew what the end result was going to be. Victory. And now Jesus is saying, as my father sent me with the same assurance, with the same authority, with the same belief, with the same confidence. Listen to me. I send you, coward men. <gasps> because they were coward. They were in fear. The Bible says that they begin to celebrate. They begin to celebrate because they saw Jesus. They were so excited. And then, and it was so happy. And then Jesus says, peace with me. Peace be with you for the second time. I skipped that part just if you were keeping notes. But Jesus said, peace be with you for the second time. Because they were celebrating too much. And listen to me. That celebration was exuberant. That celebration was off the house. I love worship. I love worship. Worship is one of the highlights of our church. You come to our church, it's going to be in your face. Worship is in your face when you come to our church. Listen to me. And these disciples were worshiping Christ, Christ in Christ. Says, Peace be with you. Chill out. Relax. Relax. I'm about to tell you something else. Sometimes we get too involved in celebrating. And we're not paying attention to the following words. Relax. I'm sending you out. To be my disciples. And then he says. And he breathed on them. <sighs> you remember at the beginning when the, there was clay there was no movement there was no life and then whew, this is not inhale or exhale the God doesn't need to inhale or exhale he is in himself contained he's breathed his presence on them whew, and he said to them now receive the Holy Spirit. That is the birth of new life. Right at that moment when he breathed on them is the birth of new life. That life that you had before was defeated. But this new life is going to be an extraordinary life. This life is going to be a miraculous life. This life is going to be, to be able to do the things that you never thought that you, you the kingdom of Rome would not. Listen, the, the, the kingdom that you wanted to be a part of in this earth, it doesn't matter to you anymore. You're going to go to the gates of hell and you're going to bring people back with this new life. The fire of hell will not be able to stop. You won't, you're going to be able to go all the way through the flames of fire and come back alive with the prisoners of hell. Come on, somebody say amen. God is sending us out to make a difference. God is sending us out with the new anointing. God is sending us out while it's Jesus Christ governing in heaven, empowering us, empowering in our lives to make a difference in this world. Listen, I've heard you just finish a month of missions. Some of you are struggling in whether you're going to be able to meet your faith promise. Some of you didn't make a faith promise. Shame on you. Because you should let go of your fear. You should trust your finances to God. He knows better than you do. It is not about the mighty dollar. It is about faith in Christ. It's about trusting God as you walk. Trust in God as you walk. Trust in God as you walk. Trust in God as you, got, you walk. Listen to me. You got to be able to begin to walk in the faith that God has planted in your life. And you got to begin to live in that faith in a, in a manner that is out of this world. And I'll finish with this. I know you're getting nervous. We're, we're actually remodeling two sanctuaries with no money. No loans. 
I was approved by AG Financial four years ago. They approved me in 20 minutes. I was supposed to fill up the paperwork, send it. I went to, I was filling it up one day, and then God says, what are you doing? Close the computer, I said, never mind. I met uh, the head of the uh, AG Financial and one of our, 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 our network councils, and, and he says, Eli, we're waiting for the paperwork. You know, yeah, I don't, I'm not gonna need that much. I'm gonna need about 100,000 less. You know, God has been good and this and that, but I'll send it, I'll send it within the, this, this week, I'll do it. So I came home, sat at my kitchen table, opened the computer up and, and began to type up. And then the spirit of God says, what are you doing? I never told you to get a loan. Never told you to get a loan. What are you doing? Two buildings. And I closed the computer down. I preached that Sunday. That woman was visiting from Guatemala and she began to speak a message in Spanish and said that God, God tells me to tell you to come and buy with no money. I am the God that provides the milk and honey. Some of you know the scripture, huh? We're almost done with our two buildings with no money. When we were about to move into our new sanctuary in Silmar, we were about to move, we, we needed carpet, we needed the TVs, we needed to, to set up our temporary sound system. We needed a bunch of stuff. And they came to me and says, we ran out of money, Pastor. Two weeks before the end, we ran out of money. So I walked out of there and I said, God, I need a financial miracle. The construction team says, Pastor, we, this is the first stage of our construction. Let's not do this. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. And I said, no, we're going to do everything. And I begin to say, God, I need a financial miracle. I need a financial miracle. We move into our new building with everything in it. Carpet, sound, TVs, media, everything in it. We never got the money. <laughs> never got the money. But the money never ran out. That is the God I serve. That is your God. That is standing in front of you this morning saying, listen, it's time to open the door. It's time to open the doors to the world that I'm sending you out. It's time to open the doors and begin to believe and begin to walk in faith to what I'm about to do with your life. Listen to me. It's time to start looking at the, at the, imp at the, at the impossible and begin to look at the possibles. It's time to start looking at the little ones and begin to look at the abundance. It's time to begin to look with the eyes of faith. It's time to step on and take back what it belongs to you. Would you please stand up to your feet? Father God, I thank you this morning. Spirit of God, Spirit of God, you're amazing. You're amazing, you're amazing. I sense that there's need in this house. There are people that come here with an expectation of receiving from you, God. But you release it now in your presence, God. Would you release it now? Would you release it now? Could you raise your hands, please? Could you raise your hands right there where you are? It's a symbol of receiving. Let the Shekinah glory come from you, Father God. Let miracles begin to shower your people this morning. Let faith be birthed this morning, God. Let the eyes be open this morning. Let our ears be open to your word, to, to the new plans that you have for our lives, God, this morning. Do it, God, do it, God, do it. Come on, God, Holy Spirit, begin to move in this house. Do it in an extraordinary way. Do it, God. Let your glory be manifested in this people. Let your glory be manifested in your people, Jesus. Oh, Father, you are awesome. You are awesome, God, you are awesome. You are awesome. You're the God that answers prayer. You're the God that speaks to your people this morning. Let this morning be the morning that you make your presence known in the life of an individual. Let this morning be the morning where you come in to the room that had the door shut. The soul that was wounded the soul that was aching 
begin to walk through the aisles of that soul to the deepest corridors of that soul and bring back faith bring it to the forefront God bring it bring it back for the glory of your name Jesus for the glory of your name Jesus and the people of God says amen thank you Amen.